Okay, the question to Richard is, could you please tell us the circumstances under which you were fired from the Agricultural Land Commission? Yeah, yeah I, can you hear? Oh, here, I better use it. Um, I was flying back from uh, Cranbrook. I got to Kelowna. I got a phone call, and 30 seconds later, I was done. Those were the circumstances. I, I, I guess the, it, it goes a long ways back beyond that. Um, as I said, I had, I had six ministers. Um, the first three, I think, bought into what we were doing. Um, and the first three came along prior to the 212 election. Everything changed after the election in 212. And, and um, I think there, there's, there has been within this, um, this particular group uh, uh, for a number of years a lot of agitation against the ALC. Um, and I think those folks uh, got their wind up after the 212 election and they were going to do something about it and they did. Um, I don't think, uh, how do I put this? When I was appointed by Minister, the Premier, um, Premier Campbell, uh, it was a long process. I went through a Quite a, quite a process. I, I had three meetings um, with various folks that interviewed me, including the, the deputy minister and a, a bunch of others. Then I had two other meetings with a, a host of cabinet ministers, and then I had the last meeting with the premier of the day. And um, and when he said, "If you you know you got the job, if you want it," but I want to say you probably. Uh, you're probably taking on, uh, under my expectations, one of the toughest jobs in, in the government. And um, I said, I think I'm up for it. I'd like to give it a try. And he gave, um, he gave the go-ahead, and, and the Minister of the Day gave me the go-ahead to go around the province, do a complete review. And I said before, I, I wrote a 110-page review. Uh, Colin Fry and um, Brian Underhill, who were key staff at the time, we traveled the province extensively with a number of commissioners, uh, saw things that were wrong, and the first thing was I felt that if we're going to run an organization with applications as the key, and that's our only job, we may as well fold the tent, because over time this thing's going to go. Uh, I felt that we should run an organization that... Um, uh, removes farmland as an exception, not rather as a, an expectation. And there's still a lot of expectation out there, and I thought we had to break this cycle, and Sig, you would know, uh, I, I know all of us, that, that there's not unanimous acceptance within the farm community for the ALC. Uh, I, I, since I've been a young guy, I, I think I've I argued very, very hard within agricultural politics at the various meetings, and Harold uh, did as well, and I certainly did, that uh, this is good for agriculture, it's for good for the long term. Uh, of, I, I guess both within that group and within my family, as I said to Sig tonight, if my mom and dad knew I ever was, was chair of the ALR, I, I I would have been disowned, run out of town, and uh, never farmed again in the Bullock household. But uh, it was that way, and I thought we had to change that uh, expectation. The other thing I felt is we had to get the speculation out of farmland. Speculation on farmland is, is uh, you know, people. there's a lot of people with a lot of money, and they're prepared to sit and wait. And uh, they put a lot of pressure on folks. And I thought that the way that the ALC was governed at the time, with, um, and this was a real stickler, uh, six, as we've gone back to now, six regions with three folks in each region. I, I, 
I inherited six ALCs that were running independently. And they're all making different decisions in the six regions across the province, and they were looked upon by the politicians, both provincial and municipal, as their people, not as commissioners for the ALC across the province. Um, and the other thing I recommended was that that had to change. We didn't need 18. I had a budget of $1.9 million, which sounds like a lot, it's bugger all. I had 18 commissioners plus a chair, that's 19 of us, and I had 17 and a half staff. I never did meet the half staff, and I'm still looking for that one. So. But that's what we had. We had, we had more governance than we had actually people working. I'm giving you what I think the litany was. Then I was struck to, to get a CEO. And I said, okay, if I get a CEO, given what I think the, the, the expectations are for salary benefits, I'm looking at 200,000 bucks. That's 10% of my budget. I don't have it. I don't need a CEO. What the hell do you need a CEO for? I've got perfectly good people here. We're running the organization. And I ran up against a lot of problems there, but the first three ministers in the first regime that I worked for were all on side. And I'll name them. Steve Thompson comes out of a strong farm family. Family started farming back in the Okanagan, what, Sig, late 1800s, probably, 1880, 1890. The next one, Ben Stewart come out of the Okanagan, same thing. Family started probably 1905, 1904. Strong agricultural background. And then I had the, the goofiest guy in the world, Don McRae, who comes out of a school teacher, but was the best agricultural minister I have worked with since provincially Dave Stupage, way back when, who was probably, well, again, somebody had to push this thing politically and Dave Stupage pushed it with the backing of the Premier of the day. So I'd say provincially he was the best minister I've worked with and, and federally it was Gene Whalen who again was one of my mentors as well. So those, those, those three, and I'll tell you Don McRae from Cowichan, New Comox, wherever, yeah, it's up the island here somewhere. Knew bugger all about agriculture. Nothing. But by God, he asked good questions. And he took the advice, or he didn't. And if he didn't, he told you why. And there was no arguments. He just asked questions. The guy was good. Then along comes the election, and things change dramatically. They never talked to me, and I just did what I wanted to do. I said, this is what I'm going to do, and it's, I'm reducing my 18 commissioners down to nine. I felt one was good enough for the, this area, one was good enough for the Okanagan, one was good enough for the Fraser Valley. I needed two for the Caribou, I needed two for the Kootenays, and I needed two for up north because of the great expanse. So that gave me nine commissioners. And they were not operating as regional, they were operating as provincial. I was traveling my people, all, I was traveling these people all around. I was mixing them up. They were the, 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 the folks from here were traveling to the Fraser Valley. They were traveling to the Peace River. My, my commissioners had the broad view of agriculture in this province, and frankly, they knew the business and it doesn't matter where the hell you're from, the decision on the ALC is based on your legislation, not on the political whims of either the municipality or the provincial government. And that pissed them off. And it really pissed off the North. And it really pissed off one of my agricultural ministers up there, who then, winds up one day at 
at an application hearing, and it's all public. This is, you can go on the website and find this one. Puts his arm, hands, arms around the applicant and starts walking off. And here we are with my commissioners, and I'm running an organization that is part of the judicial system. This is not a willy-nilly organization. My commissioners are like judges, and they've got to be treated that way, and I, I gave them hell. We wrote a report. I took on the mayor, of, who also showed up, of Fort St. John, and the minister of the day, or became the minister of the day, and of course it ruffled some fetters, feathers. But the ALC and organizations like that are creatures of government. If the government wants to change the rules like they've done, that's their prerogative. But once the rules are set, they do not come and start to lobby us on applications. If they do that, it's gone. And I think that was the beginning of the end. And uh, we stood up to them. And, and the result, I'm not surprised at the results. I'm disappointed because I think we were going in the right direction. I think there's a, there, there are folks in this government that believe we are going in the right direction. But there's a group in this, there, the people that are running this, the group down here in Victoria right now are going in a direction and I think in 212 they got their wind and they're doing a whole bunch of things. My, you know, and my concern is beyond farmland. My concern is we're, we're digging up the country, we're, we're damming up the country, we're drilling up the country and we're not respecting the country and that, that bothers me to no hell. And the other thing I came up against is, is again, the Peace River. The Peace River, to me, is, is the future of agriculture. The North is the future of agriculture in this province. Figure in climate change, along with the soils. Uh, as we discussed, Harold Noah, we discussed last night, I, I spend a lot of time up North because I think that's where the future is. And I'm not talking tomorrow or the next day, I'm talking 50, 75, 100 years from now. And I, our job at the ALC is to look that far ahead, if not farther. And when I look back and I look at my career, which has been close to 50 some years now, that's not a very long time. You know, I was just young folks like these not long ago, right, Sig? Yeah. And, and, and when we look down the road, and you look where the Fraser Valley was, or the Okanagan was, or parts of Vancouver Island 50 years ago, 100 years ago. 100 years ago, we were barely any people here. Now look what it is. And we go north. You know, north, that Peace River area, Harold, what he was talking about, and I'm up in the Fort Nelson. We've got frontiers still in this province. And those frontiers have to be protected. I got up against the fellas up in Fort Nelson, and the mayor came to me and, and came to us and, and was yapping here in Victoria saying, why is the ALR up in Fort Nelson? So we went up there and had a good look around in Fort Nelson. You want to see soil? Go up to Fort Nelson. You want to look at the climate? Go up to Fort Nelson. They've got as long a growing period as the Peace River that Harold was talking about. They've got in the summer average of two degrees more heat, which is big. You know, it doesn't sound like much, but heat units and agriculture are key. And we said, you're not going. This is staying in the ALR. If you need some room in Fort Nelson, we're prepared to talk to you with the municipality, but you're not touching any land. So that pissed a lot of people off. I think I got fired for saying, listen, agricultural land is sacrosanct. And the last thing you do is remove it, not the first like we've been born and bred to do in this country, in this province. So that's the reason I'm gone.